My name is Jim Estes, and today I'm going to talk about a drill that I think is extremely important for the swing plane. So what I want you to do is, and this, by the way, is going to give you an instant understanding of exactly the feeling you want to have in the golf swing. Take a club. You can put a rod, alignment rod, in the grip, or I'm sorry, in the butt end of the golf club. Take the golf club, turn it like you're going to hold it, and then what I want you to do is take that club, put it right against your left hip, so you're holding both clubs here. Now you've got an alignment rod on the ground and a golf ball, and what I want you to do, getting into your good posture position, your weight over the arches, getting feel balanced, the insides of the heels are going to be about the width of your hips. Take a swing back, slow motion, and trace with that alignment rod the target line all the way up. The shaft should be parallel to your target line at the top and then slowly coming down, trace the line and do this in slow motion. Right into the impact position. So this is an Great feedback tool, visual feedback tool for learning the proper swing plane. Go right to your impact position. I encourage you to do this drill in slow motion. And if you have five minutes a day, if you do this drill every day, I guarantee you're going to improve your golf swing. So again, I think you'll find this to be extremely helpful. JimEstisGolf.com if you have any questions. In your setup, you want to hinge from your hips, pushing your hips back, slide your hands down your thighs till you reach the top of your knees, and then put your hands together directly under your shoulders. Now what I see here, Ranjit, I think you have too much bending your knees, I think your pelvis is underneath you too much. Okay. I need you to hinge from your hips and push your hips back to create a little more space. The knees should be over the center of your arches, just behind the fifth metatarsal. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, my knees are way back. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I don't think you have enough space here. Right. So I want the. So another way to look at it is, your rear should be out over your hips, probably six inches, or thereabouts, and you can see, you're not quite out enough. Right. Okay. So we want to. Now he has shorter arms than you. Mm -hmm. So. It appears like he's pushed away more, but uh, so a good, you know, a good way to do this would be just pushing your hips back. Now I even lock my knees until I get to the top of my knees. And I have really short, short, really short arms. Mm -hmm. My arms are two inches shorter, so that would be a way to do it. Okay. All right. So yeah, you're definitely a little bit what I would call, uh, you know. You have excessive bend in your knees. Mm -hmm. Usually what that means is your weight's not centered over the middle of your feet. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to stack your load-bearing joints. So you want to have your, your ankles and your, your hip sockets pretty much in a direct plumb line. Mm -hmm. uh, so that would address the width issue. Um, and so the swing plane, there's three different swing planes. There's the sh some people swing the club on the shaft plane. Some people swing it on the elbow plane. Some people swing on the shoulder plane. And depending on your biomechanics, it, and I'm going to do your biomechanics here in a second. If your forearms are longer than your upper arms and your wingspan exceeds your height by two inches, you should have a high swing that's fairly steep. Mm -hmm. um, if your forearms are shorter than your upper arms and your arms are, your wingspan is less than your height, you should have a flatter swing, okay. shallow swing. Um, you have, well, you have plenty of mobility. Your arms go up and they come down. That's pretty good. I like that action right there. Yeah, and another thing she's she's really trying to work on is uh, basically when I first started, my wrist was breaking right. easily, and right. that's still a problem. Like it was breaking like up here. And oh. I was just, uh, just hitting it fat every time. Oh, you were just breaking your wrist at the Yeah, time. I was basically just kind of flicking it down. And so 
basically, I, the m main thing I try to focus on is just kind of keeping this as long as possible. Right. Good. Um, Good. It looks better. It still doesn't happen all the time. But so the takeaway is a little bit the club swings in behind your hands. It's kind of dark. You can't see the club head very well. But, but basically, right here, the club is behind your hands too far. And so the angle in your left wrist, this angle should remain constant like your hands are in a cast. Okay. So on the takeaway, your external obliques, the core mus muscles rotate the trunk, and your hands stay very quiet. Okay. So there is no manipulation of the wrist joint. Okay. Don't do anything with your wrist. And here, you're getting the you're bending your wrist, and the club's getting behind you. Right. Now, now if you take it back properly, the shaft of the club and the club head, sh when it reaches parallel to the ground, should not be behind your hands. So the club head, when it's parallel to the ground, should be in line with your hands. Okay. The shaft should point towards your body. Mm -hmm. You see, so that's something that we'll address as well. And then you can see the club face at the top is almost at the exact same angle. The angle of the club is almost identical to the angle of the left arm. Mm -hmm. Here's the angle of the left arm. Those are the angles are pretty congruent, okay. parallel. And so, with that takeaway, your club face, it gets what we call a little shut. So, it's, the face is pointed more up to the sky. It's not a big deal. It's, yours, it's not excessively shut. Uh, but this is really good coming through the ball. You maintain pelvic stability. Your pelvis stays stationary. That's really good. Your head's very stationary. So, that's very good. So, I don't see why with this swing you can't shoot 85, mm -hmm. honestly. 85 to 90 is, is, is where I see with some practice. And you're familiar with working harder, you wouldn't be a doctor. Cause <laughs> that's a rigorous curriculum. All right.